joined us. Thank you for your time and being here. And welcome to our webinar series for differentiated instruction using adaptive tools. Um, my name is Sarah Shuja and I'm marketing manager at McGraw-Hill. I just wanna tell you that the duration of this session is 60 minutes. And just a brief overview about the session, you will be learning tips and tricks shared by our curriculum specialist, who will be talking about um, what, what you learn from AP teachers every day. And he'll be speaking from experts um, and we'll see how that goes. I do wanna remind you that we have two more sessions for this week. There is a NWEA map group, that's tomorrow, and a math intervention session on Thursday. I'm going to drop the link in the chat box in case you want to register for any of these sessions. And that would be the end of our April webinars, I guess. Um, but yes, yeah, so far there are only two um, and that's all. The next thing I do wanna remind you, I'm your moderator for today, along with my colleague who should be joining me soon, but we're in the background here to help and support you. If you have any questions at all, or you're facing any technical difficulties, um, just let us know and we can try to help you out. I want to introduce you to Thomas Legali. He's done numerous webinars with us before. Thank you so much for being here with us again my honor, thank you. And he's had an experience of 10 years in educating as a high school classroom and also seven years at McGraw-Hill. That's a long time, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I, I earned all these wrinkles and these dark circles <laughs> under my eyes, right? So we're we so glad you could share your expertise with us. Honestly, thank you so much for your time. I know it's really early for you there, so thanks for a lot. <laughs> 5 a.m. Whoa. I know. Okay, as as just last slide for me, I promise, is just I know a lot of people <laughs> request about the webinar recording. So we will be sharing the recording with you via email. And those of you who are attending the live session will also be receiving a certificate uh, by email again, like I said. And there is on your chat box, I just want to let you know that drop down here is set to host and panelists. If you can click on that drop down right here and select everyone your colleagues and peers and everyone in the session will be able to see your comments as well. I think it says to host and panelists only right now. So just click on the drop down for me and select everyone, then we can make this as interactive. We do wanna make sure we keep this session as interactive. So ask us questions, um, join the discussion in the chat box and we'll keep it as interactive as possible. And thank you so much. I guess that's all for me. I'll stop sharing now, but I'm here in the background if you need any kind of support. Thank you. Over to you, yeah. Thomas. Yeah, you got it. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing sound. There we go. Perfect. Um, uh, I'm so excited to be here and share with you today. Um, like Sharish said, I do want this to be as interactive and uh, answering your questions. That I always say to teachers, this isn't my presentation. This is your presentation. And so if something uh, strikes you in, in your brain and you want to get it out and ask that question, make sure you put it in the chat. And we have some people to help us kind of uh, join those questions together. So I am, uh, was 10 years in the classroom, now seven years at McGraw-Hill. Um, I love what I do. I get to talk to AP teachers every day around the country and, and look today around the world. Um, and I'm just so proud of the advanced placement curriculum and the difference that it can make in kids' lives that I feel like in my small way, I'm getting to make a difference uh, for these kids forever, right? You're changing these kids' lives uh, forever. So I tried to break today's presentation into before the course, during the course, and just before the test. Uh, I don't know how well I did that because some of the things overlap, but I did kind of the best that I could do. Um, let, me, um, let me see where my... There we go. I want to get to know you just a little bit because I don't quite know the audience that I'm uh, uh, speaking to. So I, I'm going to put some questions up here and you don't have to answer all of these questions, but I just want you to spill a little bit in your brain so I know uh, how to craft uh, my message of who I'm talking to. So what AP courses do you teach currently or what AP courses would you like to add to your curriculum at your school? How many years have you taught AP? And if zero is the answer, that's totally fine as well. And then what's your biggest struggle 
right? So if you currently teach AP, what's something that you're struggling with? And then I, this is one of my favorite questions is what is your why, right? What is your why? Why do you teach AP? Um, I just have to tell you a, a story from, from my life. Uh, I wasn't going to teach uh, at all. It wasn't even on my radar. And I got invited uh, by a group at my college to work with uh, disadvantaged children. Uh, and I joined this program within my college town and worked with these kids. And they, uh, it was so incredible, the transformation and uh, light bulb moments that I got to see that at the end of that kind of summer program that I, I just did kind of on a whim to help out some friends led to a 10 year teaching career and now seven years at McGraw Hill. So my why, right, is to uh, help these change these kids lives forever. And I see it happen every day. So if you'll put in the chat uh, function answers to these questions. And while you're doing that, I'm going to play this uh, quick video that talks about it's AP teachers talking about their hopes for their students. I want kids to walk out of my class being willing to question. What I would like my students to take away from an AP class would be that they have a work ethic, uh, that they're able to uh, uh, do work on a consistent basis, uh, look, look for other possibilities, uh, be critical thinkers. I want my students to be able to take away this, the ability to educate themselves. The one thing I really wish that all my kids get out of my class is to really like what they're doing, to like chemistry, to like the program. Uh, sometimes they might have a hard time, they may not like the subject, but if they like the class and they see how it fits into their life maybe later on, uh, they'll be more interested in taking either more chemistry or things related to chemistry. I like them to be able to connect what they're learning in my classroom to the outside real world. If I could have my students take one thing away from my class, it would be that being a human being is complicated. Sub ideas would be that literature helps us to think through what it means to be a, a human being. I want them to know real life applications. Where is the calculus used? Why is it used? And I can answer the questions for the kids. The one thing I really want my students to take away from the course is a true love and passion for art. And they become museum goers and art historians. Most of them don't go on to major in art history, but that's not really the point. Um, the point is they've developed uh, skills to help them be successful in college. And for me, they love art. If there was one thing I wish students would take away from my class, it's to please, please, please think about life outside the four walls of your high school. Please think about life outside the box. Students should know that learning a language is not only learning a language, it's also learning about a culture, it's also learning about practices, and it's also about learning a new and different way of living. And I think kids deserve that opportunity. I want it to be something that's not simply for the grade. More important for me is that they develop incredible cultural sensitivities and start to understand um, that it's a it's 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 their mission in life to to go out there and change the world. Uh, Y'all, I think watching those teachers is really inspiring. I I concur with everything that they say. Uh, it is um, uh, we're trying to make the, these kids know that there's a world outside the four walls of our school. We're trying to create. Uh, sophisticated adult level, um, college level thinkers. Um, and that's what the AP framework and the AP curriculum has the ability to do. So I, I like to point out these three things when I, I'm talking to teachers is AP, uh, well, first of all, I wanna look at your chats, right? So I did look at the chats during the video. That's why I did the video so I could read your chats. Um, there's a lot of people that have not taught AP yet. Okay, awesome. We're glad you're here. Welcome to the table, right? I like to take um, 
I like there's a I like to equate it. There's a table of AP and everyone's invited. The real big issue is we have to give everyone the chair they need to sit at that table. And for a brand new teacher, it may be a booster seat, right? You need just a little more help and support. For a teacher, I saw someone had taught uh, AP calculus for 10 years. You win, holy smokes, way to go. Um, that person's a champ and gets it all the way to in their bones. And so we welcome all of you here. Um, th th there's three slides here just talking about why we're teaching AP. So first of all, AP exam scores have benefits. Listen to this, even if you don't get a three, four, or five. Okay, so it's scored one through five. College credit is considered a three, a four, or a five. But if a kid gets a one or a two, I would argue that being in the room with incredibly rigorous content, in the room with incredibly rigorous students who are overachievers, okay, all ships rise. Okay, I want you to think of that image, all ships rise. So if there's kids in there who aren't quite prepared or aren't quite getting it, but they're being exposed to really beautiful, rigorous, college level, advanced level thinking, you're benefiting that kid, the trajectory of their life forever. Okay, and that is a big deal. Okay, that's, I boiled down, I'm not reading that whole slide to you. The other thing is colleges and universities, when they see AP on a transcript, they know that kid pushed themselves, worked a little harder, tried to do some advanced level curriculum, it gives them, you see at the bottom, 85% of colleges give a kind of a tick mark in your direction uh, if you've been taking AP classes. So first of all, exposure to really great content. Really, you look really great to colleges and universities and finally saving time and money. So most kids who take AP and y'all, when I was teaching, I would have kids that would take five, six, seven, eight. I had one student who basically started college as a junior in their third year of college because they had taken so many AP courses and so many AP tests. So the money, energy, and savings that they got through this program, uh, really life-changing. She got to uh, finish college in basically two years, okay, and get out in the world and, and start hitting it. So really kind of great. So uh, if you're not aware, before you can even teach, AP um, content, you do need to attend an APSI. And that stands for AP Summer Institute. This is, I'm in no way promoting a single institute, but I liked this video because it gives you a sense of the camaraderie and the kind of spirit of what an APSI is. Uh, and it's, it's really short and quick, so I'll play it real fast. Become a member of our APSI at Goucher College. Awesome. So there are APSIs across the country in the U.S. And now there with uh, the COVID, there's been a lot of uh, interest and in, uh, allowance for online participation, which has allowed teachers from around the world. So I'm going to go to the AP Summer Institute's page on AP Central. Okay, so if you're taking notes, you'll want to go to that AP Central. And there's an AP Summer Institute's page. Okay. And this is, this is the main thing. It's, a, it's about 30 hours of work. They tend to be, and I don't know with the time change um, for you, they tend to be Monday through Thursday, right? So they're, they're full time, full day, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday is usually for teachers in the US a travel day uh, to get back home. But see what you'll do, explore uh, course exam description, the unit guides, making the connections, develop a course plan, uh, exam informative and summative assessments, right? Pla practice applying the scoring guidelines. And, and the thing is, these AP Summer Institutes are taught by master teachers who have taught AP for years and years and years, sometimes college professors. The other thing I will say, because we have varied uh, experience on the call today, is there will be expert teacher APSIs and there will be novice ones. Right, so you'll want to look at that. And if you've never taught AP before, you'll certainly want to sign up for one of the brand new uh, teachers uh, for the APSIs. Okay, so look, I'm going to scroll down. There's the, the Summer Institute page is quite 
uh, robust. It really helps you answer your questions, but you can see all the AP Summer Institutes, okay, from around the country. Now, I'll tell you, since you're, uh, 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 you would be attending probably virtually, uh, it maybe won't make that much of a difference, but if you were in the U.S., you would want to go to one of the ones in California that's located on the beach. <laughs> There's a, a summer institute in California called APSI by the Sea, and it is the most popular and sells out so, so, so fast. Um, so uh, I tell you to go to this APSI summer institute page. You do need to be certified once every four years. Okay, so that's an, an ongoing uh, thing. Uh, I do know in the US, but I don't know how it would work for you, is there are grants, their uh, schools often pay for these for their teachers. I do believe they're in the like four to $600 range. So they, it is quite an investment, but usually the school pays for it because they're adding that curriculum. It is usually not an out of uh, teacher pocket sort of thing. Are there any questions about um, uh, any of the AP Summer Institutes? I'm gonna keep my eye over here. Excellent workshop uh, for brand new teachers. Let's see, any APSI questions about AP Summer Institutes? Awesome, I'll give it just a second. All y'all can chat that. Y'all, the, the reason I played that video from that group of teachers, it really is a group of like-minded teachers. You're a biology teacher and you're gonna be an APSI. Um, yeah, someone asked, can they be done online? You will have to look um, for the online ones because uh, not everybody uh, uh, has them in that way, um, but it is definitely a trend. There definitely are. You saw that uh, lady say that teachers around the world are join joining her. So yes, they can be done online. You would have to do it online, right? Uh, you couldn't travel to, to go do a week long thing in the US, it just wouldn't be cost effective for you. Um, anybody else, any other questions? Once every four years, remember to do uh, one of the brand new ones if you're a brand new teacher or one of the more experienced ones if, you're, uh, if you've taught for a while. So general exam info, there are 38 different exams, okay? They're mostly two to three hours long, okay? Someone said they did one online, if you look in the chat, perfect, okay? The first part of the exams tend to be multiple choice, okay? This is the thing I love to point out. You won't receive or lose points for incorrect or unanswered questions. So um, kids should not go bubble answers when they freak out that they're out of time. They should leave them blank, okay? They should leave them blank. And then the second part of the exam, and this is the part really where the AP Summer Institutes come into play, is the free response questions. Kids are asked sophisticated, uh, college level, interesting, uh, next level adult thinking questions, and they have to respond. Um, this is my favorite thing about AP questions and, and AP graders. So um, kids can answer a question in a way that you don't agree with as a teacher, right? Um, but if they've used documentation, and pulled facts from those documents and defend their answer using information from multiple sources that have been provided to them, they'll get full credit, right? Because it's not about your agreement as a teacher. There's a grading rubric, there is a scoring system, and based on drawing factual information from these sources and using the graphs and the charts and that right from, from biology, that they can uh, answer a question in a way that maybe isn't your first thought, but they still will get full credit. I think that's really amazing and kind of the kind of the victory or the special sauce of of, um, of APSIs. So one thing I want to point out to you, right? We don't, I'm not trying to really talk a ton about our stuff here, but I do want to point out um, we do have AP test prep, okay, which you may not be familiar with, but I'll open up. I'll open up the science one here. So I saw a lot of AP bio. So if you're not familiar, we have an AP uh, five steps to a five, uh, AP test prep series, okay? 
If you're not familiar with this, with this, it's an AP test prep series. This is the thing I want to point out to you. Look right here at the bottom, okay? Three full practice exams, okay? Look right here, three full practice exams uh, in the book and online, three full practice exams, okay? The other thing I want to point out to you is the word elite, okay? So there's a regular edition, but then there's an elite edition, and the elite edition has what, listen to this, teachers, 180 days of five-minute bell ringers that scaffold in difficulty towards the AP exam day, okay? I usually, sometimes I get applause when I say that, right? I'm going to imagine you applauding. So there are 180 days. This is the elite edition of five-minute bell ringers that scaffold in difficulty towards the test day. So kids come in. Open your bell ringers, kids, and um, uh, answer the question. We're going to discuss it here in five minutes. Okay, that's a great way just to get class started, that you're getting them right into the content and that you get them thinking about your subject matter the minute they walk in. Okay, but the real reason I put this at the beginning is there is a, oh, I should show you right here. What are the five steps? Okay. Set up your study program. So this five-step program, you set up a kind of timing. You wanna visit this three times a week, five days a week, whatever. But here's the, here's the, the step in the five steps that's really powerful for the beginning of the course. There is a benchmark test in that five steps. Determine your AP test readiness, okay? That is the part for the beginning of the course. Next, we're gonna develop strategies for success. Then we're going to review the knowledge you need to know to get a high score. And then we're going to practice test. We're going to do multiple practice tests. Just so you know, here in the US, a common practice is to do uh, two, maybe three practice AP exams before the exam. Okay. Now, teachers, that means either time after school or time often in the US, it's on a Saturday, right? We call kids on a Saturday. Uh, you would need to set up what works for you and because you need to test it. You need to test the time and, and set a three hour clock and give them the multiple choice questions and give them the free response questions. And you have to start a timer. That's what usually has to be sometime outside of class. And about two of them is, is good. Um, we're trying to, uh, this is kind of a joke. We want to scare them a little bit. We want the kids to be a little terrified and see how incredibly difficult and rigorous these tests are. And um, if they've never seen a test, um, it, that's not good, right? And that's not good for them going in uh, for a AP exam. So I'm gonna go back to this uh, and just tell you, I went to science here, but there is social studies. This is English, this is math. This is world languages and this is computer science. Okay, so we have all of those courses. Okay, um, someone said, How can I access AP Biology? That's the course I'm actually going to use, AP Bio, in a minute to show you some resources. So if you'll sit tight, I will certainly go into AP Bio and then AP Chem is the same, all of that. Let's keep going. The next thing you need to be aware of is the exam calendar. Okay, so I'm going to click that. We're going to go uh, to the College Board exam calendar, okay? So look at this page, the 2022 AP exam calendar page. Um, it is the start and stop times in local time. It is the day the exams are given. There's usually a morning test and an afternoon test. These kids, uh, a kid could take AP environmental tests in the morning and an AP psychology test in the afternoon, okay? So the, this, the, these kids can take these multiple exams. You'll see week one and week two, okay? And they are listed at the times that those, the local time that those exams are given, okay? So you just wanna know uh, when your um, test is given. Now that is, a, is quite a general thing, okay? Let us look at specific requirements, okay? So I'm gonna go, to this AP exam courses and exams. In fact, I will, I will chat this one. Maybe someone has already beat me to it, but I'm gonna chat to everyone, okay? So that first link that I just chatted is the calendar, 
when the exam is given. And the reason that's important, and I know you're not, maybe if you're not teaching it this year, next year they'll release a calendar too. You need to work backwards into the test. So you have a big star or a big circle on your calendar when that test is given and everything backs into that date. Okay, so that those tests, those sample tests that you're going to be giving, you, you need to be giving them in well preparation of going into that exam date. Now, the next page I show you is, Thomas, tell me about my class. Okay, so this is an AP exam, uh, kind of CED course exam description. Okay, I'm going to chat that here. So this is about particular courses. A few people have said AP Bio. Okay, I saw AP Chem as well. So here's the sciences, okay, which I know are really popular. We're gonna open that. And now we're gonna, look, it tells me right there my exam date. These are the units and we're gonna jump to this course. Okay, so this is everything I would ever need to know about AP Bio, okay, all on one page. Expand, expand, expand. This is gonna give you um, kind of the, the knowledge now, I have to tell you something interesting that happened, okay? And you guys can use, you guys can teach it in a way that makes sense or that you prefer. So back before COVID, teachers used to teach the courses however they wanted, okay? And it's, it's interesting to, to hear that, okay? So this is the college board and the uh, framework that they had laid out, unit one, unit two, unit three, et cetera. Great. Teachers were like, you know what? I don't like to teach cell structure here. I prefer to teach it way down here at the bottom. Okay. And they kind of would move things around and teach the course in a way that worked for them. And, and maybe in a way that they used to teach or, or were taught in college. That often is what happens is that if you used a certain book or you had a college professor that taught it in a certain way, you would teach it your way. Well, what happened during COVID is that the college board, listen to this, they whacked off, the, they removed these last three units and only tested the kids for units one through five and did not test the kids on these last few units. Well, do you hear what happened? Some of the teachers taught it in whatever order they wanted. So their kids were at a distinct disadvantage because the teachers had jumped around, okay? So I will tell you that a huge trend in AP now is to just teach it in the right order, okay? Or the order that the college board recommends so that if that ever happens again and there's some huge uh, kind of removal of some tested information that your kids won't be at a disadvantage, okay? Um, yeah, I'm gonna share the link for the Padlets. You have no fear. Padlets are going to come through in just a moment, okay? Um, awesome. So that is specific course. Now, guess what started yesterday? This is what the College Board is doing some cool stuff to help you and help your kids. Yesterday, April 18th, they started their two-week daily live review, and it is available for every course. Watch this. It's super fun, okay? And we're back! Hello, liebe Leute im AP-Land. Ciao, ragazzi, e ciao, ragazze. Sawete omnes. Hola, and welcome to AP Live. Can you explain how a model has changed over time? The big phrase for all of environmental science is what is sustainability? This question statistically has proved to be the most challenging question on the AP exam. So the derivative of x to the fifth, like we said, power rule, five x to the fourth. One thing we can use it to demonstrate is conservation of momentum. If you recall from last night, the very first thing we have to do when we have an FRQ gen is what? Read it, all of it, twice. Beautiful. Because you're here today, I bet that you're gonna know exactly what to do in a few weeks when it's time to write your AP essay. Look at that is happening right now, right? It is two weeks. U.S. teachers may want to go to the College Board website. Uh, it's a YouTube channel, actually. 
and uh, watch one night of these. Uh, and then they are archived. So that's one thing for you to know. Once they do it, they put the recording online. And because of COVID, there is actually two years of these available for you as a teacher and available for you as your students. They really are, I believe, more student facing. They're trying to help kids get hints, tips, and tricks to be successful on the exam. But I think for anybody online that's a brand new teacher for AP, watching a, a night or two or a couple nights of these, uh, they tend to be an hour long each night. And it is working through the course. Really, really cool content. And these are, met, yeah, there's English ones for sure, okay? There's definitely English ones someone just asked, okay? So now I wanna tell you about uh, some of our stuff that we have available, but I'm gonna tell you what we've done to try to reach everyone. And I don't know, chat this, I would love to hear in the chat. Um, so in America, there's a huge trend for open enrollment, okay? There's a huge trend for open enrollment, which means there's not a prerequisite to take an AP course. We allow at any kid, anywhere, anytime to sign up for any AP class that they want, okay? I'll share these links in just a moment, okay? So um, they, we allow kids to sign up for AP classes because it is about, remember that AP table? We're inviting every kid to sit at the table with us, but we gotta give them the right chair to be successful. And some of these kids definitely need a booster chair. So I'm gonna go, we have two Padlets here that I created. You see, look, my name is in the Padlet. That means I made the Padlet and I made them just for you. And I'm gonna go to the science one first. So this is, um, this is the science, let me back out so you can see everything. So this is the science one. There's AP Bio and AP Chem. And then there's also elective sciences over here. So if anyone, on the call today is interested in any of these other elective sciences, I gotta tell you, you y'all, I don't know if you teach environmental science, but this book is brand, 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 brand new. The digital just went live mm, yesterday, I think. So it is so incredibly new, we're very proud of it. But we're here to talk about AP, so I will hang out over here in this zone. We have a 2022 AP bio and we have a 2023 AP chem, okay? I saw some people ask for physics. We, you can buy college books, higher ed books for physics, but we have not taken a specific physics book and made like a true AP edition. So what I wanna show you when you go into these is they are filled with everything you would need to know how to review this course for you as a teacher, okay? So we put the correlations, okay? We tied our books straight to the college board. We put the units. We put what specific AP features. There's a quick little nine minute video just for AP bio and then also virtual labs, okay? So these are filled with, uh, oh, I'm gonna get rid of the, these things. These are filled with um, all the things you need to review that particular course. Zoology, environmental science, anatomy and physiology, we have the number one anatomy and physiology book in all of the US. I will tell you this book, we've had to reprint seven times. Uh, you'd think we'd get better at knowing the numbers, but every time we print more than we ever thought we would ever sell and they uh, blow out the warehouse, the trucks are on fire, it's going out the door because they're so incredibly popular. So I wanna go online, I wanna show you two things that we've done to reach students that are struggling or need help or guidance or support for AP Bio, okay? But this is all of our courses, but I'm just using AP Bio as the example. So this is our national demo account, okay? And Sharish will be able to uh, help you get this digital info. And this is our national demo account for AP Honors and Elective Sciences, okay? Sciences. So here is chemistry. The new edition will be loaded in June. Okay, so this is the old edition, but the new one will be loaded in June. And here's AP Bio. Okay, so I'm gonna click into AP Bio. This is the thing I want to share with you that we do that nobody else can do. Okay, and it's called Smart Book. Okay, I'm gonna say it again, Smart Book. All of our courses have them. Every course that you see 
that you can explore has SmartBook. I'm going to explain what SmartBook is, and then I'm going to show it to you. And this is about reaching every student. This is about reaching every student where they are and supporting each student, even if they're struggling. SmartBook is an assignable version of the ebook. Okay. SmartBook is an assignable version of the ebook. You, as the teacher, get to pick learning objectives that you want highlighted for the student to focus on. Okay. So I have a SmartBook assignment right here. You, I'm going to open it up. We're going to go look at it. This, this is an assignment I made before we joined class today, and I want to show it to you. It's the ebook, but it's assignable. Okay. It's a signable version of the ebook. 45 minutes, 25 concepts covered. So here we go. What I want you to see is that yellow highlighting. Okay. That yellow highlighting you picked as a teacher. Okay, you picked this yellow highlighting because you want the kids to focus on those things to be successful on the exam. Next, every nine to 15 minutes. Ooh, I love to read this. This is my favorite part. Kids, you make progress by completing concepts. The number of questions you get will vary depending on your needs. Guess what, kids? It's okay to get questions wrong. You still earn 100, even if you, just if you complete the concepts by the due date. And finally, submit your answers by selecting your confidence level. This will not affect your grade. So do you see what's happening? You as the teacher got to highlight certain things you wanted the kids to focus on. Every nine to 15 minutes, the students are gonna stop and answer questions. Look, I'm gonna be a terrible biology student. There's my answers. I'm very confident that I got it right. Oh shoot, I got it wrong. What I want you to see is look what just happened. It tells me the right answer, but I also can read about it. Boom, it jumps right back in the book where that subject was spoken about and it re-highlights it in blue to bring a psychological awareness for that student. Hey, you just got this wrong. Why don't you reread it really quick just to firm that up or peg, put a peg in your brain uh, uh, to, to tag that info in your head you're struggling with this learning objective. We go back to the questions. We're gonna to go to the next question. Select all that apply. I just think it's that one. I'm very confident. Oh my gosh, can you believe I got it wrong? It gives me the right answers. But look at what just happened, teachers. Before moving on, you must review a resource. Do you see the question button is grayed out? I can't answer any more questions. I can't just keep guessing because it knows that I'm guessing. SmartBook knows what's going on and it's requiring me to jump back in the book to read about that concept that I just got wrong. Again, highlighted in blue. Now, here's the best part about SmartBook. It's not a good, bad, smart, dumb, uh, wrong, right. It's none of that. It's getting each kid the help, guidance, support, scaffolding, highlighting, at the moment they need it. After day one, every kid's book, every highlighting, every blue, every yellow, the number of questions kids get will all be different for each individual child, okay? There's nine to 15 questions around every learning objective. If a kid gets something wrong, they will see a similar learning objective question in, in two to three question sets. So it really is about helping each kid individually. I like to say this, so Christy Weber, uh, I see her name in the chat. Christy Weber is really good at AP Bio as a student. She can finish this chapter in 30 minutes. Thomas, me, that's me, is struggling. That's okay. I take an hour, guess what? Christy's gonna get 100, Thomas is gonna get 100. Because it's not about how fast, it's not about how smart, how, how much I'm struggling. It's about I get the help, guidance, and support at the moment I need it. Any questions about SmartBook? Any questions about SmartBook? Okay. It is really, really, really a game changer. Uh, it is, I will tell you anecdotally, I've worked with some teachers, Miami-Dade, Miami, Florida. I worked with a teacher. She told me, Thomas, I've been teaching AP for 17 years. Um, uh, I've been teaching for 17 years and I've never had kids 
come into class with the academic integrity, academic vocabulary, as when they use SmartBook. She said, Thomas, the level of conversation in my room has changed, and I have taught for 17 years. What I, the thing I always like to share with teachers is the highlighting and the questions is not AP rigor, right? It's not uh, sophisticated, um, uh, uh, it, it's not those free response questions. It's definitions, it's basic relationships, it's all of those kind of depth of knowledge one and two, the lower on the Bloom's taxonomy. But what's great about that teachers is when they come to class, they already know the definitions. They already know like the basic stuff. Really, really, really powerful, okay? The next thing I wanna show you that we've added to, to most of our science programs is virtual labs, okay? This is a big deal. Okay, in fact, we've added a document here on the dashboard, how to assign virtual labs. There's a virtual lab right here. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you and then I wanna show you. So these are fully virtual. Every chemical, every beaker, every Bunsen burner, every pipette, everything is, uh, is available in, in the virtual lab. So there's a pre-lab here, okay? There's a pre-lab here, key concepts, overview, before you begin, you have to know these things. This is about actually the COVID back, um, uh, testing, okay? Kind of interesting. And now we're gonna go to the simulation. And it is every reagent, every chemical, every pipette, okay? So now we're gonna do the laboratory simulation control, alt K. We're gonna go through and you actually have to maneuver and then you have to, um, uh, you'll have to move the pipettes and move the chemicals around. And then there's a short video. Uh, and they, it's scientific method, right? So they're having to do a hypothesis and work through and take notes. Really, really, I had a, a, a large district in Virginia tell me that the teachers assigned virtual labs, the first one, and the kids begged for more. They begged for more. So look at this real quick. Assignments, add assignment, virtual labs right here. Virtual labs and teachers, there are hundreds of them. There are a lot. So I, in fact, tell teachers to search by keyword or filter by keyword because there's just too many. Okay, antibiotic, there's one. Okay, antimicrobial, there's three. Okay, apple, astigmatism, there's so many. Okay, so these virtual labs, it's, what's great about them is the budget's really good, right? They're just included. So you're not having to buy chemicals and reagents and pipettes and all of that stuff. It's just included with the program. Now, someone asked, where do I see SmartBook? Okay, SmartBook is in the same place. Assignment, add assignment, SmartBook right here. And you literally would create a SmartBook assignment right here. A new one, you pick a chapter, I'm just going pretty fast, continue. And now you get to pick the learning objectives that are highlighted right here. Okay, and you get to lower the time or raise the amount of time the number of questions, we continue. It goes to like a wizard, smart book, chapter two, two, and then dates and times, 100 points, I'll say, assign. And teachers, I just assigned AP reading. I just assigned AP reading with learning objectives that I selected, okay? And now the kids are gonna uh, have the opportunity to do that formative assessment uh, in their reading. Someone says they're using AP Mater Biology. Um, really, really, really uh, proud of Mater. It is a, uh, a blockbuster here in the US. And um, uh, it's really, uh, for us, it's about accessibility. We want the language, we want it to be college level and rigorous and difficult, right? But at the same time, we don't want the kids to shut down or freak out that it's just, I call it a wall of words. If you open a book and it's literally words from the left all the way to the right, just like solid, you can freak some kids out, okay? And so we uh, have spent a lot of time with the way the words are on the page, the fonts, the colors, the breakups in the way the paragraphs are laid out on the page. It seems silly, right? But a lot of it is psychology. And um, there are other AP Bio programs by other publishers that I hear from teachers that their kids, they don't even open the book ever because the kids freak out. 
And I've never heard that about Mater AP Biology, uh, which is, I think, kind of a feather in our cap. So I want to, I will go ahead and chat uh, these two Padlets. So this is, ooh, someone asked about the test prep Padlet. I put it right here. So this is the one that goes to this test prep documentation. So it's that big red cube right there. So I'm gonna chat the science one right here. This is the science Padlet that leads to all the science programs we have. And then there is a humanities one. I'm not sure that uh, in the MEA that uh, the, a lot of these would be as super applicable, uh, especially like the US centric down here at the bottom, but we have the number one AP econ in the country. We, uh, AP psychology is incredibly popular. Uh, number one AP world in the country, human geography, Langen comp. I saw some English teachers on here. Uh, the a really, really popular Langen comp program. Dig into that, I think you'll be really impressed. And then again, the AP test prep button is right here. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna chat this. This one is the humanities one, okay? So the top one is science and the second one is humanities. And again, if you need digital access, uh, uh, the email address is here, marketing.mea at mheducation.com, okay? Uh, any questions, thoughts? Um, ba, ba, ba. That smart book, y'all is in every one of our programs. It is a game changer. It is, and then you get a report. Who read? You get a report what they read, how long they read, what they get, what they don't get, what they're confused by as a class, and down to singular students. Really, really powerful information. The other thing about SmartBook is when a kid is done and turned in a SmartBook assignment, it is still available to them to do a recharge. Okay, to do a recharge and uh, use it as a study tool. Okay, so last but not least, um, oh, again, test prep. Okay, uh, that's within the that's within the Padlets. I want to talk about the APAC Summer Conference. Okay, I'm going to tell you. So every summer, the AP um, they have a summer conference every summer, and it's in a different city uh, in the U.S. Uh, and I've been to several of them and they're incredibly fun because everyone there is an AP geek and an AP nerd and just talking about AP all the time. Now, it looks like I went to this uh, site yesterday that they're going to do one more virtually and not have one in person just yet. So I bet we'll do an in-person one next summer. Summer 2023 would be my vote. So instead of this AP summer conference, the annual APAC, their annual conference, they're gonna do what they're calling a fall update. So if you wanna put this on your calendar, now uh, this may be terrible for your time zone, but Thursday, October 6th at 7 p.m. What's really cool about this teachers is that you, it's free, right? There's no cost, zero cost. I went last year to this virtual update. Uh, there'll be kind of a keynote with Trevor Packer, he's in charge of the humanities. Okay, you either love him or hate him. I don't know if anyone knows him on the, there's uh, people on Twitter have a very strong opinion about Trevor Packer, okay? And then, um, and then they will release the results of all the tests on that fall update. But what's cool is you get to hear what kids are struggling with. You get to hear what's working and what's not working what's about to change or evolve or get better. And so this fall update, I think if you're interested in teaching AP, you should put it on your calendar that Thursday, October 6th, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, like I said, there'll be a little bit of a keynote and then there'll be breakouts. You'll break out for one hour. And if you're an AP bio teacher, you'll go to that one. And if you teach AP psychology, you'll go over to this one and they, you will hear an expert that in that field, talk about the tests and the results and the kids' um, struggles and the kids' victories uh, on your little breakout session, okay? Um, as for new AP teachers, do we need to register as educators or students? Uh, for this, I think it doesn't, for this APAC, it doesn't really matter. Um, you just get kind of logged in. Um, the AP community is really, really helpful. There is a Padlet, Shireen, there is a Padlet for English, right? Let's let's go look at that really quick. I'm sorry if I'm going really fast. 
Okay, yeah. So right here, Langdon Comp, okay, I'm gonna open it. Okay, so this is a quick little, they all have a quick little nine to 12 minute video that speaks about just that course. Here's content and coverage, what makes this a great book. Here's the AP correlation. I didn't really talk about this, but the AP correlation is, this is in AP language, teachers. So this is the big idea and enduring understandings. That's a college board words and where those things are located in our textbook, okay? So if you are uh, an AP teacher and you went to your AP Summer Institute and you're trying to teach this students rhetorical situation writing, this is, this is the big idea. This is where that is located in the book, okay? This is where that's located in the book and what unit of the AP College Board. So this, okay, Shireen is like, where is that located? Okay, this is on the humanities, the humanities Padlet, and right here is AP Langenkopf, right here, and this is everything you would need to know about that program. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have about, I think about a uh, five minutes left. I was trying to see. Um, are there any questions or thoughts um, that you have? So again, um, you need to get AP aside, right? So AP Summer Institute, every four years, you'll need to get certified. Uh, the College Board website is really powerful for you to know when your test date is, uh, what the specific requirements of your course are, really great. Um, we love that five steps to a five, that test prep component for a benchmark exam, plus three full practice exams, really powerful uh, for you to have at your fingertips, plus all the grading information, right? You get all the rubrics and all the scoring guides and all of that, really, really great. Plus the 180 days of five minute bell ringers, uh, which teachers usually applaud for, um, really powerful components. And then we're proud of our AP resources. Here's the thing I'm gonna say, and I haven't read the chat in, in, a, in a minute. We don't have every AP course. We just don't, but this is what I'm gonna tell you teachers. If we have an AP course, it aligns 100%, okay? I'm gonna say that again. If we have a course, it aligns 100%. I'm gonna tell you this right now. Other publishers, sometimes they literally grab whatever book, slap the letters AP on the cover and shove it out the door, and it might only align 60%, 70%, 80%. Not good. If we have a course, it aligns 100%. That's why we don't have every course because we have books. Uh, calculus is an example. We have a calculus book, but it's about 10 years old and doesn't quite align to the AP framework exactly. And so uh, that's why we did not make an AP edition of that book. Now I will say that we do have test prep for courses that we don't have full classes for. So look at this, this is the math page, AP Calculus, AB, BC, Statistics. We don't have AP classes, but we have AP test prep for those courses, okay? We have AP test prep for those courses. So that's a place that we kind of can fill in the gaps. Computer science is the fastest growing AP course in the country, in the, in the US. And so I don't know if anyone teaches AP Computer Science, but we have AP Test Prep for those courses, but we don't have text or materials just for those classes, okay? So again, I will, I'm gonna chat these one more time. This is the Humanities Padlet, okay? And then this is, let me see, I'm gonna find the science one. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Science, here we go. And this is the science one. Okay, I'm chatting it to everyone. Um, I'm so proud of you and your journey and uh, you starting the conversation to wanna start teaching AP. It does change these kids' lives forever. Um, uh, there have been studies that if kids have been in an AP course, exposed to AP content and AP rigor and exposed to AP kids, get, get this teachers, even if they don't sit for the exam, the trajectory of those kids' lives are changed forever, even if they don't take the test. 
because they've been exposed to this really beautiful, rich, sophisticated, difficult, rigorous content because the college board, uh, y'all, the college board's content is sometimes more difficult than college, right? They've really worked hard to have very specific and difficult. Oh, I saw some chemistry teachers, so I'll pull this up, right? Look at this. I put the AP correlation on here. This is the 2023 version, the digital will be ready in June, okay? But this is the correlation. It is 53 pages long, okay? And it's done by unit. We're gonna go to kinetics, boom. This is the learning objective, essential knowledge, and the page that it's covered in the book, okay? So we're very proud. This is a brand new, again, it has the virtual labs. Here's a quick little nine minute video. I've been so grateful to have you and have your conversations. Um, and again, uh, uh, thank you for spending this time with us. That means you're committed to you and your kids to make this really cool, difficult decision about what is best for your kids. And I always say, I'm in sales, right? I would love for you to pick my book, but if my book is not right for your kids, don't pick my book, okay? You should pick the book that works for you and your kids. Now, I'm confident that our books are really good and that you will pick our books, but this is about um, making your kids better. That's my why. We want your kids' lives to be changed. And um, thank you for going on this journey with us. Julie Thomas, we should thank you for being here with us today. Honestly, that was a lot of great information and, and great tips that you've shared with us, especially the tablets and everything. It's, it's yeah. really great. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you, everyone. I can see the thank audience. They're really thankful to you for all this. And they really, it looks Aww. like they really enjoyed the session. Yay. Thank you. I'm so, so grateful really, you were here. Thanks a lot for your time. And as Thomas mentioned, if you want to get in touch with us or um, you need any details from, um, you know, you're looking, just email at marketing.emia at mheducation.com. So if you're looking for a demo access or you have any questions or you want to know where can I get this program, just email at marketing.mia at mheducation and we can direct you. Thank you so much. Uh, quick link to two webinars running this week. That's tomorrow and day after tomorrow in case they are relevant to you. That's right here. So tomorrow is NWEA Map Growth. And then the following day on Thursday, we have Math Intervention. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for being here. Thanks a lot again, Thomas. See you next time. Thank you. Keep in touch, friends. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank Paula you. says this session was very useful. The best one so far. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, ringing endorsement. Thank you, Paula. I'll send my $20 bill to you, okay? I'm gonna mail it. I'm gonna mail you some money, okay? And chocolate, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye until next bye -bye. time. Bye-bye.